Anant Devate for this evening. We at the Guild are greatly honoured to present this retrospective of Sudhir Patwardhan, curated by Ms. Nancy Arajanya. I would like to introduce Ranjit Hoskote, a cultural theorist and poet and a curator. His six collections of poetry include Vanishing Acts 2006, Central Time 2014 and Jonavail 2018. His translation of a celebrated 14th century Kashmiri women saints poetry has appeared as I, Lala, the poems of Lal Dade in, in 2011. He is the editor of Dom Moray's Selected Poems 2012. Hoskote curated India's first ever national pavilion at the Venice Biennale titled Everyone Agrees, It's About to Explode 2011. He has received the Sahitya Academy Golden Jubilee Award, the Sahitya Academy Translation Award and Sanskriti Award and the SH Raza Literature Award. Ranjit, could I please request you to come and take this evening ahead? Thank you. It's really a very, very special occasion, this reading. And I'd like to thank, before I go any further, the National Gallery of Modern Art, who's hosted this marvelous retrospective, and the Guild Art Gallery, uh, Shalini Shani, who I just saw, uh, who supported the exhibition, Nancy Adijania, whose magisterial curatorial uh, intervention has shaped it, and of course, Sudhir Patwardhan, the artist whose magnificent work over five decades is all around us as we speak. And I think one of the, one of the inspirations for this reading is the fact that Sudhir emerges from a particular moment in the cultural life of this metropolis where the arts were not separated by what Tagore might have called narrow professional walls. Uh, instead, it was a time, and I'm thinking here particularly of the 60s, the 70s, and well into the early 80s, uh, it was a time when poets, filmmakers, architects, painters, theater makers were all part of the same conversations, the same debates, and sought inspiration from one another. And I think that also emerges in, in, in this magnificent body of work, we see all of these inspirations at work. So this multilingual poetry reading is also a way of offering Sudhir a gift, if you will, because at the heart of his work, as we all know as his viewers, is the metropolis, the crucible of transformations, the place where people come together from very, very different linguistic and ethnic and religious and regional backgrounds. And I think it's worth emphasizing this at a time when we are all being encouraged fairly forcibly to conform to some unitary and monistic notion of uh, doing politics, being a, a people, being a nation. I think the sheer heterogeneity that we see celebrated in Sudhir's work is a value and a source of inspiration in itself and a source of renewal for us today. So it's a matter of great delight for me and it's a privilege that friends and colleagues such as Geev Patel, Kamal Vora, Sampurna Chatterjee, Prafal Shiledar, Mustansir Dalvi, and Hemant Divte have consented to take part in this. And through their work, what we see, what we will hear, uh, will really be the voices of the city, its various languages, uh, Marathi, Gujarati, English, uh, Hindi, Urdu, Bangla, all of these languages will make their presence felt. And I'm going to begin really by inviting Geev Patel to, to inaugurate the readings. All of you are familiar with Geev's work. Uh, he, he has straddled the arts. He's a poet, a painter, also a playwright. His books of poetry include 1966, the very first book, Poems, which Nissim Ezekiel published, followed in 1976 by How Do You Withstand Body, which Clearinghouse published. It's part of a canonical moment in Anglophone Indian literature. Mirrored Mirroring in 1991 was published by the Oxford University Press and marked a certain turn, if you will, towards the metaphysical, although 
Give is very likely to come up and deny that strenuously. And most recently, his collected poems were published by Poetry Waller uh, last year, 2018, actually. Uh, in another one of the marvelous collaborations that characterize our literary scene here, uh, Poetry Walla is an imprint that was uh, initiated and is sustained by Hemant Divte. And when I come to Hemant and Hemant and Smriti Divte, and I'm going to when I when I come to Hemant in this sequence, I'll say more about that, because what we are doing today is presenting work, but also pre presenting dimensions of practice and exploring how poetry far from being an isolated activity, is actually part of the larger process of social and cultural and even political transformation. As an artist, Give has been very well represented in private and major public collections, such as the, the Essex Peabody Museum in Salem, also the Kiran Nader Museum of Art, Delhi. He's received the Woodrow Wilson Fellowship and the Rockefeller Fellowship, and of course, for very many decades, he was also a uh, medical practitioner, a doctor. So it's both as healer and as creative intelligence that Giv Patel has crafted his journey through life. Give, may I invite you to come up to the lectern? And please join me in welcoming Give Patel. Thank you, Ranjit. Very kind words. Thank you. Um, the first part of my reading, uh, I'm going to read from my own works, and uh, I'll end up with a few of my translations of the 17th century Gujarati mystic poet, Akho. Uh, from my own work, I've chosen poems uh, with an eye to paying a tribute to this magnificent exhibition. Uh, to this work, and also to the wonderful curatorial work of Nancy Adajania. And so I have chosen poems which have specifically to do with Bombay City. <coughs> Bombay's own. Bombay stray dogs are like none other. They know they live in India's most prosperous city and try to keep at the very least a merest patch of fur glistening clean and clear of fleas in the middle of all the mange. from Bombay Central. The Saurastra Express waits to start, chained patiently to the platform. Good pet. While I clamber in to take my reserved window seat and settle into the half empty compartments, cool. The odor of human manure, vague and sharp, drifts in from adjoining platforms. The station's population of porters, stallkeepers, toughs and vagabonds relieve themselves ticketless into the bowels of these waiting pets. Gujarat Mail, Delhi Janta, Balsar Express, quiet, linear beasts, offering unguarded toilets to a wave of non-passengers. Bombay Central's in-residence population. That odor does not offend. The station's high and cool vault sucks it up and sprays down instead interspersed with miraculous heraldic shafts of sunlight, an eternal station odor, amalgam of diesel oil, 
hot steel, cool rails, light and shadow, human sweat, metallic distillations, dung, urine, newspaper ink, Parley's gluco biscuits, and sharp, noisy sprays of water from taps with worn out bushes, all hitting the nostril as one singular, invariable atmospheric thing, seeping into your clothing the way cigarette smoke and air conditioning seep into you at cinema halls. I sink back into my hard, wooden, third-class seat, buffeted by this odor as by a divine cushion. And do not suspect that this ride will be for me the beginning of a meditation on the nature of truth and beauty. Uh, the next poem I'm going to read is called Toes, as in T-O-E-S. It has to do uh, with an experience at my clinic uh, of a patient. You know, uh, I mean, lots of patients come and do a little bit of pao parao sometimes, you know, which is quite okay. But this particular man was obsessive about it. And uh, at the beginning of each interview, he would want to touch my feet. And at the end of each interview, he'd want to touch my feet, to the point which became ex acutely embarrassing for me. And so, I tried to hide my feet <laughs> under my desk, but he'd, he'd fish them out <laughs> and somehow or the other get his way. And uh, you know, it resulted in tremendous turmoil for me. And this poem is a, is a description of that turmoil. <clears throat> Toes. Small, slightly built, wistful, stooping down to touch my feet at the end of an interview. I come to anticipate the stooping, look forward to it rather. Despite the loathing Unmistakably, I want it to. Then the mandatory, reassuring, dismissive folding of my hands, I too acknowledge his humanity and God in him. But whereas mine is regal, official almost, and therefore supernally humble, his would always remain short of cringing, he asserting his humanity only in having done the last necessary thing to declare between us the acknowledged baseness of his station before my loftiness. An exchange appropriate maybe to an age of seers and acolytes, but what to make of it at a small private medical clinic in densely packed central Bombay, exploding with commerce. Holy ash, were it a remote forest retreat and I wisest of the wise, would I not thrill again to that light touch administered to my toes? And he turn away blessed or soiled by the clammy encounter. Uh, the last poem from my book is called uh, Friends. 
and it's uh, and then uh, uh, witnessing something at hanging gardens there's two very young boys uh, but they have only one camera between them and so they have to manipulate and exchange things and here it is friends two 14 year olds at hanging gardens one cell cam and one blue and white cap between them spend 20 minutes serially clicking themselves before flowers the one having been clicked taking the cap off his own head and placing it on the erstwhile photographers now sitter in turn who later surrenders cap and claims cell cam again to click his friend a second time round i do believe not a flower would have declined posing along uh i'm going to read a few of my translations of a co 17th century mystic poet uh uh very difficult you know to talk about him let's just read the poems he's abrasive he's harsh but he's also compassionate uh i think he weeps for humanity and therefore he can he can really drub it into humanity as well um in this first uh, uh, poem that i'm going to trans uh, tra- uh, read uh there's something about about like um the way measure was conducted in at the time when i was 10 years old i remember uh, the dudwala coming to the door and uh my grandmother saying uh mane ek ser dud joej and um, and uh, the english of course converted that to seer and i'm but i'm going to stick to ser because uh, you know seer also implies uh, the wise man you know again in the same way uh you would say uh ek mand kanda and the british said mond but i'm sticking to mand okay your sleek physique has earned you a quarter ser by weight of public esteem study scripture become weightier everyone rushes to hear you discourse all can see you weigh a tola pronounce yourself a guru then and tip the scale your reputation mounts a hefty mand mr flimsy once now sir weighty says akha reckon this though true insight is the casualty attend attend to the words of the great how they reverberate a drum booming over arid fields blind meet the blind at midnight oil seal mixes oil seed mixes helter skelter with grain to be milled with it when strained yielding neither porridge nor oil the monkey in spangles set up on a stool his keeper waiting at the town square countless those in maya's thrall chimpanzees one and all at rest for a second distracted the next moment akha says your days earnings will be snatched away but you will retain 
that leash at your neck. Time standing sentinel at your tail. The last one. Factions arise in place of oneness. You roar, Ram. Others shout, Allah. The deuce. Whose names are those? And of what use when no one knows to tend his own space? Controversies, says Akha. Says Akha. Yes, you will excel at those. Entranced in play, a mere courtling babe, God abides alone. Give thank you so much. And I was moved, among many other things, also by the way in which the space of your poems began to open up to different languages and different levels of language. Because as we know, no language is really pure. Most languages are strengthened by what they absorb and what they borrow and what they steal from other languages. And I'd also like to dedicate this reading to a figure who was deeply important to me and I think also important to a number of other people here, George Steiner, the literary critic who passed away yesterday. Steiner was an extraordinary figure. He was a polymath. He was also someone who genuinely believed in the transformative power of language, but also was deeply aware of how language can be instrumentalized and even weaponized in battles over identity. And he'd survived the Holocaust, so his family had survived. So he knew something about how this plays out. And he also had a great regard, although his critics saw him as Eurocentric, he had a great regard for the very special things that various languages can do. In one of his lectures, he talks of how there are no small languages. And that uh, he talks of how there are languages in the Kalahari Desert which have nuances for the future, for futurity, for the subjunctive, that, as he says, were not available to Aristotle. So. It's not as if any single culture or civilization or language has a monopoly on excellence, on comprehensiveness. And as, um, as believers in the multilingual and the interlingual consciousness, I think we all take this idea, this practice very, very seriously. So in that spirit, I'm going to invite Kamal Vora to, to present his poetry next. Kamal is a distinguished Gujarati poet. He was honored with the Sahitya Academy Award uh, he's published three collections of poetry, Arav in 1991, Anik Ek, as one word, in 2012, and Ruddha Shatak, most recently in 2015, which takes the form of the century, the Shatak, a hundred poems on the experience of, of aging. Uh, two more of his collections are, are, will be out shortly. He co-edited Adhunik Bharatya Kavita in 2017 for the Sahitya Academy. And his poems have appeared in translation in a number of languages, in Hindi, in English, in Bangla, Kannada, and Marathi, and Irish. He also, uh, traveling the other way, translates poems from several other languages into Gujarati. And with Noshil Mehta and Kirit Dudhat, he's the co-editor of uh, Etad, which, as many of you know, is a prestigious Gujarati literary journal, which Suresh Joshi founded. Uh, Kamal, with these words, I'm going to invite you to the lectern. Please join me in welcoming Kamal Vora. First of all, congratulations to Sudhir for such a wonderful show, and thank you for inviting me here. Uh, Ranjit has permitted only one poem to be read in translation, so I'll... <laughs> I'll read one poem in English translation from Vruddha Shataka. He did not know whether he was growing lonely because he was old 
or whether he was growing old because he was lonely. He did not understand how long he would keep growing old, growing lonely. He did not know whether he was more old or more lonely. He could not figure out whether old age was better or loneliness. He did not understand whether it was age that made him swing between being and non-being or was it loneliness. Like the seed in the tree or the tree in the seed, he did not understand. He had not been able to understand. He was not going to understand. But he did know he was growing old and he was lonely. Thank you. Now, uh, now on I read all my poems in Gujarati, so put to test your understanding Gujarati. This same poem I'll read in Gujarati. Ene khabar padti nauti, e gharado thai gayo hato, itle eklo padi gayo hato, ke eklo padi rayo hato, itle gharado thai rayo hato. Ene khabar padti nauti, aam ne aam kya sudhi e gharado thashe, aam ne aam eklo. Ene khabar padti nauti, ये घरडो बधारे हतो के बधारे एक लो इन्हें खबर पड़ती नोती घड़पन सारु के एकलता इन्हें खबर पड़ती नोती इन्हें हतो न हतो घड़पने करी दी दो हतो के एकलता है बीज माँ वृक्ष के वृक्ष माँ बीज नी जेम इन्हें खबर पड़ती नोती इन्हें खबर पड़ी नोती इन्हें खबर पढ़वानी नहोती, पर इन्हें खबर पढ़ती हती, एक घरडो थे ही गयो तो, अने ये एकलो पड़ी गयो तो। Now next in Gujarati, it's titled Dabu Jamnu, left and right. In Gujarati, for to left and right you don't have to add anything. Dabu becomes Dabodi. Leftist becomes Daberi, so, which is not possible in English, so I'll read it in Gujarati. Dabu Jamnu. Amaro ek bhai band, Daba hathe lakto, teni jaan, amne chhek trija chotha dhoran ma thai. Amara akshar, ame sarkhavi jota, to Dabo hath, moti na dana verto, ne jamno jakar tipa jarto. माँ कहती प्रसाद अने सोगन जमना हाथे ज खवाए इना आशीष जमने हाथे वरस्ता घड़ियाँ डाबा कांडे बंधाती ताबीज जमने बाउडे किटला काम डाबे हाथे थता उम्बर बाहर पेलो जमनो पग मुकातो डाबो अंगूठो पाकतो त्यारे गोखमा दिवो करातो जमना पगनो लपकारो डाबा साथर ना मूड मा थाई ने पिंडी मा उतर तो डाबी आँख फरकती त्यारे अमे गांगा था ता अने आची आची खंजवाड़ आवे तो जमड़ी अथेरी ने चुमी लेता घरनी जमने साकड़ी गली ने छेड़े अमारी निशाल हती अने एनी डाबे रंबानु मैदान क्रिकेट मा कोई डाबोडी अने कोई जमनोडी इनी गढ़ वेले थी बेसी गई हती, पर एक भेरू ने डाबा हाथे बैटिंग अने जमना हाथे बॉलिंग करतो जो ही ने अमे पहल वेलू मुंझायेला, एक बार ताड़ी पाड़ता पाड़ता टिखड़ खातर मास्टर ने उखानु पूछी बैठेला के ताड़ी कयो हाथ पाड़े छे, त्यारे एक नो जमड़ो कान अमड़ा येलो बीजा ने डाबा हाथ नहीं अड़बोत पड़े ली, जमनो हाथ तनाई तनाई ने उगमने पहुँच तो, अने डाबो आथम आथमने क्षिति जे जब कोड़ा तो त्यारे, मुट्ठी मां समाय जता सूरज चंदर, हथेली ना पोलाण मां एक रंगी थई जता, 
અને એકમેકમાં પરોવાયેલી અમારી દસે આંગળીઓ રણજણી ઉઠતી ડાબુ જમણું ડાબો જમણો ડાબી જમણી કરતાં કરતાં અમે થાકીને લોથ થતાં ત્યારે માં અમને એક થાળીએ જમાડતી પછી રમતા રમતા સાવ રમત રમતમાં ડાબોડી જમણોડી અમે ડાબેરી જમણેરી થઈ ગયા હવે ક્યારે અચાનક જ ઊંચે વાદળો વચ્ચે મરકતા માસ્તર અમને પ્રશ્ન પૂછી બેસે છે બોલો છોકરાઓ આ તાળીઓ કયો હાથ પાડે છે ત્યારે ખાલી થાળી જેવડો સૂરજ ખાલી થાળી જેવડો ચાંદો સામ સામુ પાસ પાસે ગગનભેદી ખખડ્યા કરે છે દેર આર ટુ ગાંધી પોએમ્સ ધ ફર્સ્ટ વન ઇઝ સત્યના પ્રયોગો મારી પાસે અખૂટ અસત્યો છે મારી પાસે અખૂટ અસત્યો છે તમારી પાસે હાઈસ્કૂલના પહેલા ધોરણમાં પરીક્ષા વખતે નિશાળ તપાસવા આવેલ કેળવણી ખાતાના ઇન્સ્પેક્ટરે અમને છોકરાઓને પાંચ શબ્દો લખાવ્યા હતા તેમાં એક શબ્દ ફરી વાર કેટલ હતો માસ્તર પોતાના બૂટની અણી મારી મને ચેતવે તે અગાઉ બાજુના છોકરાની પાટીમાંથી સિફતથી જોઈ એ જોડણી મેં લખી નાખી હતી બધા છોકરાના પાંચે શબ્દો ખરા પડ્યા અને અમે ત્રણે ઠોટ ઠર્યા હતા એ ઠોટ નિશાળીઓ આટલા વર્ષે ખોટી જોડણીનું બારિસ્ટ્રું કરતો થઈ ગયો છે મેની ઓફ ધ ફ્રેઝીઝ આર પિક ધ રાઇટ ફ્રોમ ઓરિજિનલ ગુજરાતી ઓટોબાયોગ્રાફી ઓફ ગાંધીજી ડાયા ડમરા થઈ પાસ પાસે બેઠા ત્રણ વાંદરાઓ દેખાડી રહ્યા છે બૂરું ન જોવું ન બોલવું ન સાંભળવું ચોથા વાંદરાને હાથ પીઠ પાછળ બાંધી બેસાડી દેવાનો હતો ત્યાં જ એ અપલખણો તો છટકી ગયો છૂટતા હાથ ઉછાળતો ખીખિયાટા કરતો કૂદી રહ્યો છે ડાળથી ડાળ ઝાડથી ઝાડ રાનથી રાન અને રંજાડી રહ્યો છે શિકારી તગતગતી તલવાર લઈ ધસી આવે ગાય કઈ તરફ ગઈ છે એવું પૂછી રહ્યો છે હું એને ઊંધી દિશા ચીંધી શકું એમ નથી કારણ એ તરફ હમણાં જ લોહી નીંગળતો એક વાઘ ગયો છે મારી છાતી ઉઘાડી કરીને એને ધરી દેવા સિવાય મારી પાસે કોઈ રસ્તો નથી એણે એક ધારું ગોખાવ્યું સાચું બોલ એણે એક ધારું ગોખાવ્યું સાચું બોલ એણે હૈયે હાથ મુકાવ્યો સાચું બોલ એણે આંખોમાં આંખો પરોવી સાચું બોલ એણે મોમાં આંગળા ખોસ્યા સાચું બોલ મેં પૂછ્યું બોલી શકાયું તો તે સાચું હોઈ શકે એનાથી હસવું ખાળી ન શકાયું કહે સાવ સાચું મારી પાસે અસંખ્ય અસત્યો હેઠળ ધરબાયેલું એક સત્ય પણ છે મારી પાસે અસંખ્ય અસત્યોથી હેઠળ ધરબાયેલું એક સત્ય પણ છે અણીની આ ઘડીએ હું હોડમાં શું મૂકું શું ઉગરશે હું શેનો પ્રયોગ કરું કહેવામાં આવ્યું હતું છેવટે છેક છેવટે સત્યનો જ જય થશે કહેવામાં આવ્યું હતું છેવટે છેક છેવટે 
સત્યનો જ જય થશે યાદ છે હા બરોબર યાદ છે એમ જ કહેવામાં તો એમ જ આવ્યું હતું નેક્સ્ટ ગાંધી પોએમ ઇઝ ગાંધી વન ફિફ્ટી એકસો પચાસ વી હેવ બીન સેલિબ્રેટિંગ ફોર લાસ્ટ વન ઇયર ગાંધી એકસો પચાસ there is a word called angaliyat in that uh, when a woman i mean a woman's husband dies she carries on her finger her son to where she is marrying new bapu hu tamaro angaliyat satya shu che te janu chu bapu hu tamaro angaliyat satya shu che te janu chu pan aachri shakto nahi asatya ne તિરસ્કારું છું પણ તજી શકતો નથી તમે સત્ય ના કર્યા હું ધિક્કારના પ્રયોગોમાં ગરક છું સોયના પુળામાં ખોવાઈ ગયેલું એકાદ તણખલું સૂકું કે કૂણું શોધતા શોધતા લોહિયાળ કરી નાખેલા હાથે કઈ રીતે મેળવું તમારો હાથ બાપુ This poem is almost, almost in English, written in Gujarati, but almost in English. Because when we said quit India, so we said in the English. The slogan was coined in English. So this is, Mr. Gandhi, we are kind of done with you. You may leave us now. Now we exist in a digital world where nothing is real. Nothing is unreal either. Na to satya no jai, na asatya no para jai. In fact, no truth and no lies. Only a spectacle of violence with live visuals. Non-violence is all junk, Mr. Gandhi. No cleanliness, no godliness. everything colorful and instant instant direct transfer for a billion countrymen hence no need of currency at all sorry no place for you mr gandhi surely we are thankful to you but but time to quit india dear father in fact we guys can help you and delete you with a touch of finger bapu this one para it picks up from <clears throat> the last uh, purnahuti chapter in autobiography so some fridhi that picked up this is uh, gandhi ji's words only satya thi bhinna koi parmeshwar nahi gandhi ji says all this satya thi bhinna koi parmeshwar nahi સત્યરૂપી સૂરજનું સંપૂર્ણ દર્શન સંપૂર્ણ અહિંસા વિના શક્ય નથી વ્યાપક સત્યનારાયણના પ્રત્યક્ષ દર્શનને સારું જીવ માત્રની પ્રત્યે આત્મવત પ્રેમની પરમ આવશ્યકતા છે આત્મશુદ્ધિ વિના જીવ માત્ર સાથે ઐક્ય ન સાધી શકાય આત્મશુદ્ધિ વિના અહિંસા ધર્મનું પાલન સર્વથા અસંભવિત છે સત્યમય થવાને સારું અહિંસા એ જ એક માર્ગ છે પણ શુદ્ધિનો આ માર્ગ વિકટ છે વિકટ ઇઝ ડિફિકલ્ટ નાઉ ધ પોએમ સ્ટાર્સ આ લખી રહ્યો છું તે કાગળ 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 પર અક્ષરો પાડતી કલમ આ લખી રહ્યો છું તે કાગળ કાગળ પર અક્ષરો પાડતી કલમ કલમને પકડતો હાથ અશુદ્ધ છે હાથમાં સ્નાયુઓનો સંચાર રગોમાં ધબકતું લોહી લોહીને ધકેલતું હૃદય અશુદ્ધ ચિત્ત અશુદ્ધ ચેતના અશુદ્ધ છે સાધન શુદ્ધિનો તમારો આગ્રહ બાપુ દોઢ સદીએ મને તમારાથી છેટો રાખે છે સાધન શુદ્ધિ ઇઝ પ્યુરિટી ઓફ મીન્સ વિચ ઇ પ્રિસ્ક્રાઈબ 
તો સાધન શુદ્ધિનો તમારો આગ્રહ બાપુ દોઢ સદીએ મને તમારાથી છેટો મીન્સ ઇટ કીપ્સ મી અવે ફ્રોમ યુ જીવી જીવીને માણસ સો શરત જીવે તમે તો દોઢસો ને આંબી ગયા ભાલા બાપુ જીવી જીવીને માણસ સો શરદ જીવે તમે તો દોઢસો ને આંબી ગયા ભાલા બાપુ હા હવે બહુ થયું સીધાવો તમારો રહ્યો સયો ઓછાયો હજુ ક્યારેક ક્યારેક અણધાર્યો જ વચ્ચે આવી જઈ અમારા તાંડવોનો લય ભંગ કરી નાખે છે ત્યારે થોડી વાર અમે ઘાંઘા થઈ જઈએ છીએ સુદબુદ ખોઈ બેસીએ છીએ પણ ફરી ફરી અમારા વિચાર વાણી વર્તનમાં પ્રકૃતિ પ્રત્યે પશુ પ્રત્યે મનુષ્ય પ્રત્યે ઝેરી વીજળીઓ ફૂંફાડા મારે છે હિંસાકારી હિંસાચારી હિંસાહારીના આ હાથે છેલ્લો કટોરો પી જાઓ જાઓ ને હવે બાપુ વાલા ધીસ રેફરન્સ ઓફ છેલ્લો કટોરો વેન ગાંધીજી વોઝ ગોઈંગ ફોર રાઉન્ડ ટેબલ કોન્ફરન્સ ઝવેરચંદ મેઘાણી હેડ રિટન પોએમ છેલ્લો કટોરો ઝેર નો આ પી જજો બાપુ ડ્રિંક ધીસ લાસ્ટ ગ્લાસ ઓફ પોઇઝન છેલ્લો કટોરો ઝેર નો આ પી જજો બાપુ સાગર પિનાળા પિનારા અંજલિ નવ ઢોળજો બાપુ દેટ્સ વોટ ઇઝ સેફ સો હિયર આઈ સે છેલ્લો કટોરો પી જાઓ જાઓ ને હવે બાપુ વાલા થેન્ક યુ સો મચ આઈ હોપ ગુજરાતી વોઝ નોટ ટુ ટેક્સિંગ ફોર યુ ઓલ થેન્ક યુ Kamal, thank you so much. It's always been extremely inspiring to, to engage with the work of uh, the post-1947 uh, body of poetry that's been published in Gujarati. And I'm thinking particularly of poets who emerged in the 60s and 70s, because if they drew, on the one hand, on the Gandhian tradition, and we just heard uh, the amazing manner in which, but ironically, playfully, and yet with great seriousness, Kamal deals with that heritage. There's also, among Gujarati poets, I'm thinking also here of Paman Jain and Gulam Ahmad Sheikh, there's an engagement with uh, very avant-garde practices, cut-ups, found poems, uh, found text, and we, we saw that in evidence in Kamal's work as well. So, Uh, sometimes in Anglophone circles, there tends to be a feeling that the so-called regional languages are probably somehow not contemporary. This is an absurdity, but it still persists. You just have to listen to more of it and realize that in some ways, uh, the so-called regional languages have actually been ahead of the game. Uh, Fluxus, for instance, uh, first became available in India to Gujarati poets not to poets in any other languages and certainly not to visual artists who got there pretty late. So this is something that it, you know, deserves to be telegraphed. I think there are many competing modernities and forms of contemporary experience uh, in play here. And that leads me now to the work of a poet, novelist, and translator, Sampurna Chatterjee, who I should embarrass by describing as Shompurna Chattopadhyay. because she may well in, I don't know what she's going to read, but she, uh, her, her literary journey has involved a very strong engagement, for instance, with uh, the trove of, of Bangla modernism. She's translated uh, as Wordy Gurdy Boom, Shukumar Rai's Abol Tabol. Um, she's also translated Joy Goshami's selected poems and is now working on Joy Goshami's prose poems, uh, which is forthcoming. Uh, she's published 18 books, which include two novels, Rupture and Land of the Well, uh, also a short story collection which revolves around Bombay uh, called Dirty Love, and eight collections of poetry, including Space Gulliver, Chronicles of an Alien, and Elsewhere, Where Else, which has a Welsh title that I am, alas, unable to pronounce, which is a collaboration with the Welsh poet Eric Salisbury. And also, most recently, Over and Underground in Mumbai and Paris, which is a collaboration with Kartika Nair, uh, with uh, illustrations by Joel Jolivet and Roshni Vyam. 
I'm also going to point out here that Sampurna is poetry editor of the Indian Quarterly. As you see, uh, all the poets here also have hybrid practices. Uh, they are simultaneously poets, but also have other kinds of literary practice. They edit, they are anthologists, and in some cases, publishers. Um, Sampurna, could I invite you to, uh, to read to us now? Please join me in welcoming Sampurna Chatterjee. Thank you, Ranjit. Uh, can, can I be seen? I can be heard. Um, you know, it's pretty overwhelming to stand in the well of this gallery surrounded by this art and these people who are very dear to my heart. A uh, big thank you for making this happen. And also I found myself very moved um, by the entire exhibition, which I've seen now twice, not just because of uh, the way in which it impresses upon one the scope and the scale of your art, uh, Sudhir, and aspects of many aspects of which I am familiar with, especially the city paintings. But I think I was very moved by the juxtapositions uh, between different periods, um, the portraits, the sketches. So I'm going to begin not with a city poem, but with a poem I've never read out aloud from my very first book, which is no longer in print. And it's simply called Drawing. I'm drawing your shape in my head, endless repetitions. I trace your neck, your back, your leg. I charcoal stroke you into my mind with soft, firm lines. I hope that they will stay. I am drawing your shoulders. Your shoulders have drawn me. Uh, so I think uh, perhaps I can't draw to save my life, but the, but the desire to pursue the line towards something uh, that will make a shape and a form is perhaps something that poets and artists have in common. Um, and I think I will read, I will take a risk, and I will read from uh, some new work before I end with a piece from Over and Underground in Mumbai and Paris. Um, just some excerpts, it's unnamed, but I think it felt right for this space. If the expectation of beauty presents itself as a set of flamingos, what then? Landscape. Pulled across the screen by their towing wings. Flat land, glittery with water, pointy with hills of white, rough salt. Only half obscured by intermittent hedge and speed, the bane of cars. What then? Furthest, furthest away where haze extends an invitation to a billowing blue, the shape of uncut land, reminding ridiculous of Jamaica, never been, so how remember? If every expectation of beauty precedes what might be beautiful, what then can I do with the tatters? The temptation to orate is filled with stones. To locate this abstraction, I will begin with abstraction. Beauty, conceit, concept, construct. Running out of ink at the crucial transition to concrete. Such is life. Available at a glance like a coconut tree that stood outside my window for 17 years years, only to have its head chopped off one unheralded, unnoticed morning. Beautiful, the water inside the unfallen shell, but not enough to count in the scheme of things that enables the construction of a discourse on beauty. Until the curved blade slices into flesh and scoops a geometric opening for the water to be poured into the body that was thirsty and is now not. By the simple act of bringing lips to shell, like two mouths touching, this contact 
essential to knowing the beauty that cannot be spoken until drunk. I think a lot of uh, the transitions for me has to be has to do with obsessively chronicling Bombay as the place where I live, work, you know, kind of my uh, muse as it were, and also acknowledging now the presence of, of where I live, which is Thane. And when I move from Thane to Bombay along the highway, uh, and increasingly I think uh, begin to observe my immediate surrounding in a way that perhaps I find what you do in your work very, very inspiring because that is also what you do. You, you mark the locale and you uh, mark the transitions of that locale. So for me, this is a very slow and uh, incipient process at the moment. Never seen a bamboo fruit in all my life. See how the road swings towards the right. They driveled it up all noon, gusts of burning. For months after, the tarred roads oozed blood. Where I live or behind, um, there's incessant development and roads being built. And it made me think about this idea of work. And uh, again, it, I come back to the exhibition here because this idea of work, of labor, of um, just the physical act of making things work, of working to make a living, all of these things are, um, I guess, in the text I'm going to read. And it has a bit of Bangla, uh, Ranji, just in case you're wondering why this is so uh, English. My idea of work is flawed. Production is not the only form of work. To work is to turn my back on the rain. Work is not workplace, not destination where work will begin, but process inchoate with simultaneous beginnings. Kaj, not chakri. Shanto hater dityo kono kaj. Kajir kaj, hatir kaj. When does work, useful work, the work of hands, not handiwork, turn into labor? When it is difficult, contractual, exploitable? The Bengali word for labor is shrom, purishrom, hard work, laboring. Labor, productive work, physical work done for wages, wage work like war. But labor is also bedona as in pain, kortobo as in duty, khatuni as in exertion, labor as class, party, childbirth, the last push, laborious, unflattering because it shows the strain of labor labored, as in strained, forced, artificial, to produce through labor a piece of work that seems effortless, unforced, this the great goal of intellectual workers. The road being built outside my house is the product of Boris room. For weeks, men and women have physically exerted themselves, breaking first the wall to widen the road, then breaking the large stones, rocks really, with axes or were they shoveled into smaller stones. It was only when the stones were almost gravel that a machine appeared to smooth it all down, crush away the unevenness, pour the tar and roll all over it, erasing the visual memory of back-breaking manual labor in the sun. I do not want my brain to be that bulldozer, that road roller. I want the labor to be visible still, not in kinship, but in lament. This, this will not go anywhere. Unlike the road, now almost finished, that will eventually lead to the other side of the hills, encouraging shortcuts and speed demons. What I want to keep visible is this, this work, this useless labor. And I think I'll end with a poem 
uh, which is from Over and Underground um, in Mumbai and Paris, uh, which was a project I did with Kartika, which uh, we rode the trains, I rode the trains, I have ridden the trains uh, all my working life in Bombay, um, writing about them. And I realized suddenly that things had changed and there was a metro. So how could I have this book without acknowledging the presence of the metro, um, writing it and perhaps writing a poem on it. So I'm just going to read um, a few verses from the poem titled Ghat Koper to Versova and back. Glide through the city, artifice, keeping horrors at bay. For minutes too short to count, I am in abeyance. Scarred from without, gutted from within, unblinking facades, sealed off from the metros, crisscrossing, shutter slide, motion, new to me nomenclature, glass eyed, blue white newness. Short, smooth, disguised, essential, cold, steel cutting through arterial knot. Home loans, shot into unwary ears, fusillade from armories of aspiration. Way stations sold to the highest bidders. A dot on a clear tempered window mistaken for a hawk. Real hawks wheel outside. Mosques gleam of glass fronts. Termites consume what continues to stand. Paint, mold, bamboo, sheeting. Superimposition, the last mirage, decay at eye level, comfort at face value, tanks on roofs and dishes, washing, ladders, lanterns, living. No litany can grace this journey from east to west, impermeable shell so far from feeling normal. Warned by mechanical voices that terms and conditions apply. Don't they? Always. Here there is no damp, no heat, no fog of swamp and sewer, no noise except the pinging bullet, bone, bullet point loans, no harmonica, drummer, yodeling, singer, no singing beggar, no blind and desperate eyes swiveling heavenward. No nifty contrivance of hooks that hover cunning little packs of sweets and savouries to be snapped up for a steal. No ludo players, no lady lovers, no mouth movers and finger strummers, no veggie cutters and floor squatters, no card sharpers and seat swappers, no heart to heart gestures miming, what's mine will soon be yours. No identifiers by destination, me, Thane, you, Ambarnath. No shifting bums making room for yet more bums, generous, hanging half in, half off in impossible accommodation. No street fighting biddies, no long distance buddies, no poshed up struggling models posing for hired shutterbugs. No loose long hair flying in the breeze, no breeze. Upsetting the flow the shutterbugs want, no agents in dandy check pants taking the model's calls, no assistants calling the shots, no instructions to simulate to actual hota hai by rippling overhead handles in one swipe. None of that to actual hota hai. No, hawa kuch galat ja raha hai. Because there is no wind here, wayward enough to go in the wrong direction. Know what really happens in this antiseptic world, which is not mine, not yet, maybe never, in which I ride, trapped by my need for speed, impatient to exit, wondering who else is with me in this longing for the world outside, just outside this capsule, which I must leave to revel again in glare and sweat and funk, snarl and din and blot, drama and consternation, awareness of time and disability, erosions, histories of heart, ramshackle, scaffoldings of skin. Thank you. Thank you very much, <coughs> Ranjit, Nancy and Sudhir for inviting me for uh, becoming a part of this beautiful evening. 
I will be reading my poems in Marathi and uh, if possible I will read one English translation at, at the end as the curator of this <laughs> evening has <laughs> directed, <laughs> definitely. But it's really nice, I really appreciate it. Uh, first poem that I am reading, the title of the poem is Adi Ani Anta, beginning and the end. Adi Ani Anta Disat Nahi. पण अखंड काहीच नाही सारं काही वाहतं आहे पण अखंडित वाहणं नाही हा पायाखालचा रस्ता कुठे सुरू झाला आणि कुठे संपतो काही कळत नाही पण हा साधा सरळ रस्ता नाही तो किती ठिकाणी विखंडित झाला आहे हे पायी चालणारे पायच सांगतील हा समुद्र गच्च डुचमळतो आतल्या आत कधीपासून पण शार्कला व्हेललाच काय इथल्या सुरमईला बांगड्याला विचारून बघा असंख्य फटी दिसतात माशांना त्याच्या लाटा लाटांमध्ये खोलवर गेलेल्या समुद्रातील फटी इथल्या माशांना आणि समुद्राच्या पाण्यालाच बुजवाव्या लागतील जशा आपल्या जखमा भरून काढण्यासाठी आपणहून पुढे येतात आपल्या मांसपेशी आणि दिवसेंदिवस झगडत भरून काढतात घाव आणि या वाहत्या काळातल्या फटी जगण्याच्या प्रवाहात धारदार चाकूसारख्या खूपच राहतात त्या बुजवायला कुठली सामुग्री वापरावी लागेल कुठलं शस्त्र कुठलं आयुध कुठलं रसायन लागेल कुणाला तरी पुढे यावंच लागेल शोधून आणावे लागतील काळाचे सूक्ष्माती सूक्ष्म नॅनो कण शब्दांना घासून पुसून लख करून चमचमत्या काळाच्या प्रवाहातल्या फटी सांधाव्या लागतील कोण आहे वास्तुविद कोण शल्यविद कोण आहे शस्त्रज्ञ कोण विधिज्ञ दर्शनी अभियंता कुशल कारागीर अवकाशादरम्यान काळाचे बांधकाम करणारा नाव द सेकंड पोएम द टायटल ऑफ दिस पोएम इज हरवलेली वस्तू हरवलेली वस्तू जिथे हरवली तिथे शांतपणे पडून असते निरागसपणे गालातल्या गालात हसत सुटलं एकदाचं त्याचं बोट मोकळे झालो त्याच्या दृष्टीनं हरवलो असलो तरी खरं तर स्वतंत्र झालो सगळे दोर तुटून अधांतरी तरंगू लागणं किती सुखद असतं इतके दिवस आपली काही वेगळी ओळखच नव्हती नो सेल्फ आयडेंटिटी जी होती ती याच्यामुळे होती याची वस्तू म्हणून सगळे मला ओळखायचे पण आता तसे नाही भलेही भर रस्त्यात पडलेली गवतावर पहुडलेली किंवा पायदळी तुडवला तुडवली जाणारी का असे ना पण स्वतंत्र आता जग रहाटीच अशी आहे की पुन्हा कोणाची तरी नजर जाईल हेरून घेईल त्याला आवडली तर पटकन उचलून इकडे तिकडे बघत खिशात घालेल खेकसत म्हणेल बस झालं तुझं स्वातंत्र्य घातलंय तुला खिशात आता यापुढे खुशाल मिरो माझी वस्तू म्हणून अर्ध डिजिटल हाफ डिजिटल हे या कवितेचं शीर्षक आहे अर्ध शरीर हाडा मासाच अर्ध डिजिटल अर्धा मेंदू मांसपेशींनी बनलेला 
अर्धा डिजिटल अर्धा स्पर्श त्वचे का त्वचेशी अर्धा संभोग शरीराचा शरीराशी अर्धा डिजिटल अर्ध जगण पंचेन्द्रियान करवी जगलो अर्ध डिजिटल अर्ध जग प्रत्यक्ष फिरलो अर्ध डिजिटल या अर्ध्या मुर्ध्या जगण्यात अर्धीच भाषा पदरी पडली अर्धाच कागद मिळाला अर्धे पेन अर्धी शाई अर्धीच राहिलेली कविता हीच जी तुम्ही ऐकताय तुमच्या अर्ध्या नैसर्गिक आणि अर्ध्या डिजिटल कानांनी समथिंग अबाउट मुंबई दर हॅज टू बी गेट वे ऑफ इंडिया आय थिंक अविनाश वॉज विटनेस फॉर दिस दॅट इव्हनिंग या गेट वे ऑफ इंडिया अपरात्रीचा शांत समुद्र नीरव लखलखाट उष्ण कुंद ओलसर हवा मजबूत दगडी भिंतीला धडका देणारा समुद्र सुस्तावलेल्या शुभ्र मोटरबोट्स माना टाकलेल्या होड्या स्थिरावलेल्या रंगीत नावा दूरवरून संथ गतीनं सरकणारी जहाज काळ्याशार समुद्राच्या छोट्या लाटांचा छपछप आवाज डोळ्यात रात्र भारलं जडावले पण अंगभर भिनलेला तांबूस दिव्यांचा उजेड नेहमीचेच दृश्य न्याहाळत किनाऱ्याच्या रस्त्याच्या कडेला रांगेनं बसलेल्या घरंदाज इमारती आणि त्यातली हुसेन रजा गायतोंडींची चित्र लखलक त्या गेटवेमधून या भूमीवर पाय रोवत प्रवेश करतो किंग पंचम जॉर्ज त्याच्या मागून झगा सावरत प्रवेश करते क्वीन मेरी वसाहतीच्या खलित्यावर बुटाच्या ठशानेच शिक्कामोर्तब करतो आणि पक्की ठाण मांडून बसतो दोन शतक लोटली त्याला येऊन याची अख्खी फलटण याच कमानी खालून परतली पण याचा इथून हलायचा अजून पत्ताच नाही राहा इज नॉट गोईंग दिस पोएम इज टिपिकल पोएम नाव द टायटल ऑफ द पोएम इज ल्युशन फ्राईट सो मेनी पेंटर्स आर सिटिंग हिअर सो आय गॉट अन ऑपॉर्च्युनिटी टू टू व्ह्यू द रिट्रोस्पेक्टिव्ह ऑफ ल्युशन फ्राईड इन व्ही एना सो जो बिग canvases and the big uh, paintings it was a, uh, uh, that exhibition had a deep uh, impact on my mind and after some i think one or two years i wrote this poem uh, beside this poem there is a list of his uh, few of the titles of his uh, paintings i will read out that list and then i will read the poem in marathi the titles in small italics on left side the pregnant girl the naked girl portrait of rose easter main in the studio standing by the rugs nude with leg up benefit supervisor resting painter working reflections now the poem lucian freud landscape सिटीस्केप नवे बॉडीस्केप सुस्तावलेलं शरीर त्यावरच्या वळ्या मांसाची चरबीची वळणं वळणं उंच सखलपणात छाया प्रकाशाचा खेळ शरीराचे अघळपघळ नैसर्गिक आकार कुठल्याही वस्त्रात कोंबायची धडपड नाही कोपऱ्यातून आतून उसळ्या मारणारे विकार 
प्रत्येक पेशीवर आलेला सुख दुःखाच्या अनुभवाचा थर चेहरा निर्विकार जणू हाताचे कोपर किंवा पायाचा घोटा संपूर्ण शरीरच बोलू लागतं चेहऱ्यापेक्षाही सूक्ष्म आविर्भावांसह तरुण तजेलदार स्नायूंसारखे सणसणीत स्ट्रोक्स थकलेल्या वाढलेल्या ओघळलेल्या मांसाचे सुस्त विलंबित फटकारे झाड जसं वाढतं नदी जशी वाहते तसंच हे शरीर पूर्णपणे नैसर्गिक सूर्यासारखं लखलखीत उगवतं समुद्राच्या अथांग तांबड्या पाण्यात मावळतं हिरवी हिरवीगार पानांची भाषा आतून समजून उमजणार उमळणार त्वचेच्या आत उसळणार थकून ओघळणार शरीराच्या आत राहणारे आपण उपरे शरीराचाच एक भाग असून शरीरापेक्षा वेगळे असण्याचा बनाव करणारे जणू शरीरातले भाडे करू शरीराचे भडवे शरीराला शरीरानिशी भिडणारे व्हिएनातलं इंद्रियोपनिषद आवाढव्य कॅनव्हासभर पसरलेला बॉडीस्केप बायकोचा दुसऱ्या बायकोचा प्रेयसीचा मित्राचा सहकार्याचा स्वतःच्याच विशीतल्या मुलीचा अखेरीस आरशासमोर उभं राहून फक्त उघड्या बुटात पाय घालून काढलेला स्वतःचाच आपल्या सत्तर वर्षे ऊन पाऊस झेललेल्या शरीराचा कुंचल्याने वेध घेणार now i end up my reading with uh, one poem i'll read Again, this is a poem on Mumbai. Mumbai is a Nakasha, the Bombay map. I am Mumbai, Mumbai is a Nakasha. I think Nakasha is a Nakasha, I think Nakasha is a Nakasha. 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 या शहराखाली गाडल्या गेलेल्या सात टेकड्यांची मुंबई देऊ समुद्रावर चाल करून त्याच्याखाली बुडालेली जमीन हिसकावून घेणारी मुंबई देऊ अफाट चरत गावं नद्या नाले गिळंकृत करणारी मुंबई देऊ आकाशात चढत जाणारी मुंबई देऊ की जमिनी खालून तुंबून वाहणारी मुंबई देऊ कबूतरखाना देऊ की काळा घोडा देऊ दारावी देऊ बायखाळा देऊ कि कोईवाड़ा देव भाऊ का धक्का देव कि घड़ियाल गोदी देव धड़धड़त्या लोकल की मुंबई देव कि खड़खड़त्या समुद्राकाट की मुंबई देव भुलवारी मुंबई देव कि झुलवारी मुंबई देव उगड़ घाम गाड़ी मुंबई देव कि थंडगार एसीतले देव गाँव खेड़ शहर खेड़पाड़ विदर्भ को यूपी बिहार देशातल्या परदेशातल्या कुठल्या लोकांची मुंबई देऊ मुंबईतली दुबई देऊ की मुंबईतली अमेरिका देऊ मुंबईतला इस्रायल देऊ की मुंबईतला इराण देऊ भाषेची भेसळ झालेली मुंबई देऊ की भाषेवर गळा कापणारी मुंबई देऊ की नव्याच भाषेला जन्म देणारी मुंबई देऊ हा बघ क्युबिस्ट नकाशा हा दादाईस्ट नकाशा हा सरियालिस्ट नकाशा हा रियालिस्ट नकाशा हा ॲबस्ट्रॅक्ट हा फिगरेटिव्ह हा पोस्ट मॉडर्न तर हा पोस्ट्रुथ नकाशा कुठल्या रंगाचा नकाशा देऊ सांग 
हिरवा नकाशा लाल नकाशा निळा नकाशा भगवा नकाशा मी म्हणालो अरे 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 थांब जरा एवढे सारे नकाशे नको आहेत मला ठेव ते सगळे तुझे तुझ्याजवळ एक नकाशा मीच आणला आहे येताना माझ्यासोबत बॅगेत भरून तोच कामात येईल माझ्या मुंबईचा हा नकाशा मीच तुला देतो यात भाऊ पाध्ये आहेत नामदेव ढसाळ आहे कोलटकर काळसेकर गुर्जर आहेत भुजंग मेश्राम आहे जयंत पवार आहे हुसेन आहे सबावाला आहे पटवर्धन आहेत कोलते आहेत बडे गुलाम अली खा आहेत देवधर मास्तर आहेत दुबे आहे सुरवे आहे स्टँड किताबखाना पी बी एच आहे रिदम हाऊस समोर वेसाईड इन आहे चर्चगेटच्या फुटपाथवरचे हरवलेले पुस्तक विक्रेते आहेत बंद झालेली पण आठवणीत रुतलेली पुस्तकांची दुकाने आहेत फार लहानसा नकाशा आहे हा फार लुडबुडत नाही तो या शहराच्या टेचात हा नकाशा ठेव तू तुझ्याजवळ मी देतोय तुला हा विकला जाणार नाही कधीच कुणी कधी मागायला येणार नाही हा नकाशा पण तरीही तू ठेव तुझ्याजवळ पुढे कधी काळी एखादा माझ्यासारखा कवी हरवलेल्या डोळ्यांनी या शहरात आला आणि तुझ्याजवळ नकाशा मागू लागला मुंबईचा तर त्याला हा नकाशा दे त्याचे डोळे चमकतील तो निराश होऊन परत जाणार नाही या शहरातून थँक्यू 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 फॉर दॅट मॉवलेस कल्चरल कार्टोग्राफी ऑफ बॉम्बे द वर्ल्ड दॅट ऑल ऑफ अस हिअर इन हॅबिट अँड लव्ह अँड चेरिश अँड दॅट लीड्स मी डिरेक्टली टू मुस्तम सिर दालवी हो इज कल्चरल सब्जेक्टिव्हिटी दॅट लीड्स मल्टिपल लाईफ Mustan sir is a poet, a translator, an architect, and a, a professor of architecture. And somewhat in the spirit of, of Praful's map, he says of himself that he was born in Bombay and teaches architecture in Mumbai. And somewhere along that transition is mapped precisely the kind of wealth of experience that involves what it means to be in Kalaghura, what it means to have been at the Wayside Inn, what it means to read across languages, and to articulate them. Mustansar has published two collections of poetry, Bruha Hers of Cox and more recently Cosmopolitan, both published under the Poetry Vala imprint by Hemant and Smriti Devte. His poems have been translated into various languages including Marathi, Croatian and French. He is also the translator for the Penguin Classics series of uh, Muhammad Iqbal's uh, Shikwa and Jawabi Shikwa, which appeared as Taking Issue and Allah's Answer. He's also the editor of Man Without a Naval, a collection of translations of Hemant Devte's poems from the Marathi, which includes some of his own. Mustan sir, could I invite you to come up? Thank you, Ranjit. And uh, I must begin by saying what a privilege it is to read in this space, this rather spectacular cavernous space and I have to thank you Sudhir perhaps uh, not just for the exhibition but for the act of making this poetry reading happen here rather than in the auditorium upstairs which is sadly completely cut off from the exhibition and here since we are directly interacting with the paintings perhaps I should uh, with respect to the paintings and the curatorial arrangements of Nancy, uh, read a few poems about the city. Uh, I will begin by uh, addressing the very title of this exhibition, Walking Through Soul City, by reading a poem called Traumstadt, which is Dream City. from start who shadows remain unsilent while the girl runs away with stick and wheel 
The stumpy hirsute observes tamping down his Jekyll self. The constable scars for iterant Valjeans, wants no Rambos in his beat. Shopkeepers keep the peace. The gods forsaken, what scales this thirst for grace? Thermals sweep through passages and fretwork, temperatures drop. The whistle dusk takes apnoic breaths, aspirates like a punctured lung. The siren is monotone, a strain from a Neanderthal bone flute. Arcades fold in the manner of accordions, divide into more arches, Vusuas cross brace, entwine like caduceae, buttress the skyline. Sonambulants readjust in Caligari coffins, smile for no reason at all. There must be some purpose to spires in a place of no religion. Dry retching out of ink, the croquil scratches parchment, the city recomposed. This next poem is called Sandhurst Road. And I think there would be a lot of people here who should actually take offense at my calling it Sandhurst Road because for the hardcore Bombaywala, this is the once and forever Sandas Road. Sanders wrote, blue is the color of ubiquity, plastic asphyxiation, free for the asking, choose anything between gray and gray. Let's apply all the rules at once, what follows? Who stands to tell of the city that turns worm-wise in negligible shift? We need no plumbing, we band of brothers, only tin cans of water. I spit rust on curbs, black terraces send feelers to the skyline, I get no answers. Out of the compost of complexity rise pure forms, dumps elevate. One can only pile on so much, flyovers flake. Richter grins, shrugs, shakes. The haze forms halos round skyscrapers. Grown men choke on angel dust. Neons clack on green. The muezzin's call rings true, reverberating. Street walkers work tectonic shifts. Trancers spend the night in self-imposed day. Tattoos chitter pierced body parts, die dry, a whole new woman. The new man's wired, strutting down electronic highways made in China. Ring a ring of cell phones, pocket full of missed calls, the signal is down. Keep pressing, hold it down, see if it stays when you take your hand off. Bring me your tired, your homeless, I'll give them space enough to stand in. Let's play. The game starts with get up. The winner goes to sleep first. Uh, I was looking for poems that I haven't really read out before, and I just found one which I thought is appropriate, so I shall just read it. Uh, this is a poem from my first book. Uh, it's called Apple. My car idles at a traffic light. I am approached by a beggar, her hand out. Glass bangles clink. I turn to the girl who drops her sari to show me her nipple. 
I look away, but I have seen what I have seen. We are forever joined in a transaction of eyes and skin, her purpose accomplished. A palm looms over my dashboard, objective lips twitch, I wallow and seethe. So falls Adam, tripped by petty foggery. I reach into my trouser pocket to finger the hard, serrated edge of a five rupee coin when the light turns green. This next poem also comes from the experience of walking around, wandering in the city. Uh, it's a poem called Bird Upside Down. I'm no ornithologist, but I swear there's a pigeon's foot poking out of that man's trouser pocket. I see a blue-gray feather, a further affront to my reality. The man moves with as much care for his charge as loose change. I turn away impulsively, steer clear of the pink talon. Prognosis of tetanus and rabies clash with the confusion of brushing against the living or the dead. The claw clenches. Why would a bird allow itself to keep a karmic carriage upside down in a man's pocket? Does it clutch an adjustment, twisting to find a better position to indignantly peck the man's cuddle bone? But is insurrection tempered by the prospect of birdie num-nums soon after? Or does it ease and stretch for comfort to snuggle into the warmth of his crotch, commit itself to salad dreams of warm updrafts and homing posts? Does it accept the avian condition, a nonchalance of loosened limbs? The man shimmies through forests of hips, his hand always kept close to his heart, where he keeps his cell phone and a packet of cigarettes. Just find one. Uh, I am particularly uh, fond of Sudhir, your paintings of uh, the parts of Bombay which are at the most extreme, you know, especially the areas which are developing, which have, which are almost incomplete, but as you have painted, there are so many odd things emerging and there is a palimpsest both of the old and the new superimposed on each other. Uh, that is the way we found New Bombay when we first settled in almost 25 years ago. And uh, this is a poem that reflected that time. Uh, but in a sense it reflects most of the edges of our city which have this kind of almost a twilight zone between being urban and not being urban. Uh, this is a poem called Friday Mosque in New Bombay. Knees of the, knees of the derelict faithful, stained by the morning papers, pink, the economic times pages are prayer mats. Global stock indices all face due west. Half a practice specialized for those who abjure usury, the chartered accountant thrusts duties on a green horn doing article ship, rushes out with a bottle of mineral water for ablutions. Neither taps nor electricity, no building completion certificate an old mosque in a new town, its incomplete frame still exudes 
semantic meaning. The writer of apps for Android with a heart-shaped goatee, rad with the pack he runs with, outsourced like himself, has the approval of an imam well-versed in the semiotics of the very glance, the throwaway remark, who knows excessive deference that borders on dread. The imam puts his day job first, but once a week to everyone's dissatisfaction, dismisses his M-lit class with some sense of urgency, not to be late for horizons. At dusk, he raises the call for good work, punched out on an SMS, and waits for his diasporic jamaat to come together. The new Bombay sun does not set, it fades. The imam, a PhD on Dylan Thomas, prays against the dying of the light. And since translations are called for, I shall end with a short poem in translation. Uh, this is a poem by uh, Hemantivte, and it is a poem called Mail Address. Mail Address. I reach into the innards of a Pentium 4 processor and log on. Chat with a friend beyond the seven seas. He knows of my former life, of the riots in Malegao, of the Shiv Sena's Dasera rally, of all the prizes Asha Bhosle has won, and so on. I know how his wife was hurt yesterday. His son ran his tricycle over the little toe of her left leg, how his yellow shirt got burnt while ironing it, how his son misses my own, whom he met just last month. I informed him that I did nothing special this Dasera, that my blood pressure is okay, and so on. Last night, a lot of loud noises were heard from our neighbor D'Souza's flat. This morning, his front door opened with a bang, but being civil and all, I did not know just how to ask D'Souza what happened. I had not run into him for several days now, and I don't even know his email ID. Thank you. And that segues very neatly into Hemant Divte's reading. Hemant is, in his various roles, poet, translator, editor, and I would say, actually, um, an activist in the cause of uh, poetry publishing. Uh, I've referred often enough to the work that Hemant and Smriti Divte have been doing under the Poetry Wala imprint. Uh, and one might think that that would be a very full-time activity. Nonetheless, Hemant continues to be committed to his own practice, his own inwardness. He is the author of six collections of poetry in Marathi. And there is, like an unfinished symphony, a series of translations of his work that have been rendered into English, most recently uh, under the editorship of, uh, of Mustansir. He's also part of publishing history for two reasons. He was founder editor of the Marathi little magazine, Abhidanantar, which was published uninterruptedly for nearly two decades and really defined the Marathi literary scene at a certain point after the 1990s. And Poetry Vala, of course, in, many, in one of the crossovers that characterize these lives, has published a very large number of Anglophone Indian poets, once again drawing our attention to the ways in which these traditional divisions are increasingly breaking down. Hemant, could I invite you to share your poems with us? Thank you, Ranjit. Thank you, Nancy, and uh, thank you, NGMA. But one other thing, Chitra, I'm a fan of Marathi for many years. I'm going to talk about Marathi in the first place. Kavita Suddha. But one other thing, I'm going to start with the first place. I'm going to phone call. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it. 
तर फोन केला आणि विचारलं की तुमचं अमुक एक चित्र मला पाहिजे आहे ते कदाचित मला ओळखत नसतील अभिदाला ओळखत असतील तर म्हटले हां घेऊन टाका त्यानंतर त्यांनी अजून एक विचारलं की तुमच्याकडे त्याची चांगली इमेज आहे ना म्हटलं आहे मला विश्वासरावांनी दिलेली आहे तर अशा प्रकारे मी त्यांची खूप चित्र अभिनानंतरच्या अंकांना नंतर पोएट्रीवाल्याच्या काही कविता संग्रहांना माझ्या आयरिश ट्रान्सलेशनच्या पुस्तकालासुद्धा म्हणजे स्कीन अशी बरीच चित्र आतापर्यंत उपयोगात आणलेली आहेत त्यांचे आभार मला कधीच मांडता आले नाहीत मी ही संधी आता घेतो आणि आभार मानतो मला कायम चित्र छापायला परवानगी दिल्याबद्दल आणि आज गिरगाव म्हणजे गावदेवीच्या चित्राच्या समोर असं मी असंच म्हटलं म्हणजे गावदेवीचे चित्र आहे जिकडे माझी आई आजी राहायची त्या बिल्डिंगच्या चित्राच्या समोर मी कविता वाचतो आहे आणि कविता पहिल्या दोन कविता चित्रांबद्दलच्याच आहेत मनातल्या मनात मनातल्या मनात चित्र पाहताना चित्रातले कळत नाही काहीच मनातल्या मनात चित्र पाहताना चित्रातले कळत नाही काहीच आणि आपण असतो उभे चित्राबाहेर शीर्षकासारखे जसा सर्व अर्थ सामावलेला आपल्यात तरीही आपण समजू शकलो नाही आपल्यातल्या अनेक चित्रांना चित्र चित्र मांडली आहेत ओळीने आपल्यातल्या कलादालनात आपण सरकतो एका चित्रातून दुसऱ्या चित्रात किंबहुना प्रत्येक जणच चाललाय एका चौकटीतून दुसऱ्या चौकटीत आणि प्रत्येकातलं चित्र डोकावत आहे बाहेर पाहत आहे आपल्यातून निघून चाललेला माणूस कुठलं चित्र नेतोय वाहून त्याच्या चेहऱ्याबरोबर दुसरी ही कविता आहे डिप्रेसिंगली मोनोटनस लँडस्केप माझ्या त्याचे तीन भाग आहेत त्यातला पहिला भाग माझ्या मनातला लँडस्केप कसा काय वाहून गेला असेल मुलीच्या मनात आताशा समोर तर सर्वत्र पसरल्या आहेत बिल्डिंगा मॉल हायवे फॅक्टऱ्या आणि ट्राफिक आणि आणि तिला लँडस्केप काढायला सांगितला की ती सनसेट काढते वाहून जाणारी नदी झाडं शेत देऊळ काढते माझ्या चिमुकल्या गर्द आकाशात उडणारे चार आकड्यांचे पक्षी काढते ह्या अमर्याद शहराच्या अरण्यातून तर कधीच दिसत नाही माझ्या मनातल्या घरापलीकडचा सूर्यास्त नदी रस्ता देऊळ पक्षी पायवाट तिच्या मनात कुठून आले असतील दोन माझ्यातून वाहून गेलेलं बालपणाचं चित्र ती असंच का काढतेच उत्तर जेव्हा तिला समजेल तेव्हा या जगातल्या सगळ्यांचीच सगळी चित्र वितळून तर गेली नसतील ना किंवा उरली नसतील ना बंद बंद फक्त चित्रांच्या मौनात तीन तिला पडतात मलाही घाबरवणारी स्वप्न मुणकी नसणारी माणसं वाहून नेत आहेत अनाथ गावांची प्रेत 
शहरांच्या स्मशानात किंवा वाहून आणतायत भयावह शहराचा लँडस्केप गावांना इरेज करून त्यावर लादण्यासाठी तोच तोच तसाच तसाच लँडस्केप सगळ्याच मुणकी नसलेल्या लोकांना सामावून घेतो आहे सगळ्यांच्या सगळ्याच्या सगळ्या शहरांना तीस तीस नावं तेच तेच रस्ते तशाच बिल्डिंगा तेच मॉल त्याच त्याच ठिकाणी ठरलेल्या शिस्तब शिस्तबद्ध कवायतीला उभ्या सैन्यासारखे त्याच त्याच नावाची त्याच त्याच रंगाची त्याच त्याच वासाची त्याच त्याच रूपाची त्याच त्याच चेहऱ्याची क्लोन क्लोन भासणारी त्यास त्या भुलभुलैया चौकात ती त्यास त्या पुतळ्यासमोर पोहोचते कुठूनही परत धावत सुटते परत परत पुतळ्यासमोर पोहोचते खाणाखुणा लक्षात ठेवायची सोय नसलेल्या त्याच त्या शहरातल्या त्याच त्याच लँडस्केपवर पोहोचते त्याच त्याच ठिकाणी तिला तेच तेच लोक दिसतात तीच तीच भाषा बोलणारी त्याच त्याच आकाराची त्याच त्याच हावभावांची त्याच त्याच लांबीच्या रांगेत त्याच त्याच आयडेंटिकल स्टायलीत उभी त्याच त्याच स्टेशनात जाणारी त्याच त्याच ब्रँडच्या गाड्या चालवणारी त्याच त्याच वेगात त्याच त्याच वेळी त्याच त्याच उंचीच्या त्याच त्याच प्रकारच्या त्याच त्याच झाडांच्या त्याच त्याच दरम्यानच्या डिवायडरवर त्याच त्याच सारखी डिवाईड झालेली त्याच त्याच रस्त्यावर त्याच त्याच बॉम्बस्फोटात त्याच त्याच प्रकारे तीच तीच माणसं तशीच तशीच छिन्न विछिन्न त्याच त्याच प्रकारे भेदरून त्याच त्याच प्रकारे तुटलेली त्याच त्याच मोनोटोनस पद्धतीने त्याच त्याच प्रकारे टी व्हीवर कुठल्याही टी व्हीच्या कुठल्याही चॅनलवर तशीच तशीच दाखवली जाणारी तशीच तशीच उदासी वाढवणारी दृश्य मोनोटोनस मोनोटोनस मोनोटोटल टोटली मोनोटोनस डिप्रेसिंगली मोनोटोनस टोटली डिप्रेसिंग डीप डीप डिप्रेस्ड होऊन ती डीप डीप कोसळते गर्दीतला माझा गच्च धरलेला हात सुटण्याच्या शेवटच्या क्षणाचा माझाही तसाच भेदरलेला डिप्रेस चेहरा पाहते आणि आत्मनाशाच्या मुणकी नसलेल्या माणसांच्या महापुरात माझ्यासारखी वाहून जाते तेच स्वप्न त्याच वेळी मलाही पडत असतं मीही भेदरलेला तिचा डिप्रेस चेहरा पाहतो थरार पाहतो थरारून जातो गावाला शहराकडे नि शहराला गावाकडे वाहून नेण्याचं विसरून जातो इथे पोहोचतो कुठे पोहोचतो ह्या कवितेचं आणि या नंतरच्या कवितेचं तुम्ही सगळे चित्रकार आहात तर चित्र काढा असं मी सांगेन कवितेच्या ओळींना कवितेच्या ओळींना चिकटलेला असतो आयुष्याचा कुठला तरी क्षण आणि रिकाम्या जागांमध्येही जसं खाल्लेल्या चिकन लॉलीपॉपला चिकटून उरलेले असतातच चिकनचे काही कण तसंच जसं की दोन शब्दांच्या दरम्यानही असतंच कवितेचं ताज रसरशीत माउंस आणि शेवटची कविता आहे भाषेचं काय झालं थकेली थकेली सुकळी खाल्लेल्या 
भुकेल्या मुलाच्या भाषेचं काय झालं थकेली सुकडी खाल्लेल्या भुकेल्या मुलाच्या भाषेचं काय झालं काय झालं टायर टायर खेळत गावभर भटकणाऱ्या मुलाच्या भाषेचं काय झालं गोट्या टबू खेळणाऱ्या किरकोळ मुलाच्या भाषेचं काय झालं सुरपारंब्या वितीदांडू लगोरी भवरा नवरा नवरी डॉक्टर डॉक्टर खेळणाऱ्या मुलाच्या भाषेचं काय झालं जत्रेत उन्हाड पिपाण्या वाजवत फिरणाऱ्या मुलाच्या भाषेचं काय झालं चिंध्यांच्या गोळ्याने मारामारी आणि क्रिकेट खेळणाऱ्या मुलाच्या भाषेचं काय झालं आपल्याच मित्रांशी बोलताना घाटी ठरलेल्या मुलाच्या भाषेचं काय झालं भाषेचं काय झालं थँक्यू हेमंत थँक्यू हेमंत थँक्यू सो मच अँड वी नाव ब्रिंग दिस इव्हनिंग ऑफ पोएट्री टू अ क्लोज आय व शेअर सम माय पोम्स विथ यू अँड I'll pick up where Hemant left off in a way in terms of thinking through questions of place, language, and being disoriented, which I think is also a very powerful element in Sudhir, your own work. And this poem also is by way of uh, an homage to the title, The Idea of Ru, What is the Soul Doing in This, in this Material City? I, I, there's a play on that word in this poem, which is called Returning Native, <clears throat> and it goes like this. In dreams his feet crunch on a carpet of pine acorns. His nostrils flare with the leopard's fetid breath. He hasn't forgotten the Khansama's stuffed capsicums, the quilted pulaos and dagger chilies. His tongue furred with patwa lessons. He walks on the beach, once again a rusted child reciting from a primer, wondering what damsons are and what words like asphodel mean. The words no longer fit his tongue. The vowels hurt, the syllables clog his mouth. He has been too long away. He says, Ru, meaning stillness. The men sharing his table hear Ru, meaning soul. Is this the mutant's fate? When I speak, they picture another script and answer, not me, but the thought of me. He complains to the lanes and fountains he knew. His exclamations fade to blue in the summer glare. The street signs are written in another color. I'll move now to a poem called Hymn to the Stranger. Because sometimes in, so these evocations of groups and crowds, which sometimes become mobs, there's also that deep sense of being threatened by being among others. How do you define yourself yet um, retain a sense of anxiety whilst being in the larger human collective? So him to the stranger. You are invisible. No cloak, no halo, no staff to single you out among the crowds that surge at daybreak as you slash a path through their murmured prayers, trailing a wake of puzzled pilgrims who felt a brief shock pass, touching their caps or sleeves leaving in the air a whiff of sulfur, a hint of camphor, the lightest tremor of clove. And where the hand can bear the pressure of your gauntlet, you press hard, leaving the man to cry out, marked by his friends as mad, an ecstatic dowser of unseen springs, a lute for unvoiced harmonies, You do not wait to see what use they make of your gifts, the people you touch. Some 
Wide awake, fan the day with torches. Others fall asleep on their feet. Every corner they turn, a blind corner in a labyrinth echoing with buskers. You're a step ahead of the fastest, a shade behind the slowest, grenade in one hand, cyanide vial in the other. You are destroyer, you are redeemer, now shrewd, now negligent, one eye on the score, one eye on the moving finger that keeps the score. Hour without name, you swim beneath the days of others. When you surface and your hand comes out of the duffel bag, some get paper roses, some serrated throats, others hear no more than the inconsolable cry of an extinct seabird. You hack through the streaming plankton crowds as they pray for your advent, never looking back, a torpedo invisible. And this one's called Late Lunch in a Besieged City. The cashier's in shock. He dragged out the striped awning, expecting rain, a metal peacock's fan. Now it's lying, twisted on the ground. The windows are shattered, the tables shrouded in sheets of the finest broken crystal. Beheaded men are walking through the smoke towards us and ambulances are wailing like voices hunting for the throats that have abandoned them. But nothing can derange the ephemeral moment, which will die only by its own hand at a time of its own choosing. An army of firemen could not clear up the drop trembling on the chilled lip of the beaker, the crumbs resting on the plate, the fish bones heaped neatly to one side, the shiny orange left for a later that's just been postponed indefinitely. And two poems now that refer to the city but refer to the water that is so much a part of the city and yet doesn't seem to form part of our social lives somehow. This one's called Marine Drive. There's a color whose name I've lost to the ash fleece of cloud, the grackled light of a monsoon sky seesawing in the gaze, unframed, a trap for the sailboat wheeling in the bay. This color that hovers between tenses, some call it violet, others squeeze their eyes shut when it surges through slate gray folds of water, either not yet or too late, never tame at your heel. But look, the rocks are coming into view, dazed seals resurrected from the waves. The tides worked itself loose of the shore and drifted out. There are no explanatory notes. What's left behind is not the remainder there's a color whose name I cannot speak. And this one, again, to do with water in Bombay and what it can do is called Tide Mark. It was written in July 2005. And some of us here will remember those, the events of that month. Tide Mark, Bombay, July 2005. Water draws a line around the things we loved. I pluck dead birds from the wash and burn their feathers. This is where I belong in tidal water, drawn up over my feet like a shell blanket. I hate the city on the sea, but I will die here. Thank you for your attention. On behalf of the Guild, I would like to thank our poets, Kamal Vora, Praful Chiledhar, Geef Patel, Ranjit Hoskote, Mustansir Dalvi, Sampurna Chatarji, and Hemant Tivate. 
and to this audience to be with us on this beautiful evening. Thank you and have a wonderful evening.